Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about video enhanced AI. And the reason I do a video enhanced AI video is because I did a poll on my YouTube channel what was mo most interesting about machine learning and it was the different applications of machine learning models. And this is an interesting application of it actually. You can take a home video or some old video material and enhance it so you get a better viewing experience. And I have a lot of videos, so I wanted to try this out a little bit. So let's jump over here to my screen. And you see here, this is the interface. It's written in Q, uh, Qt, and it's pretty simple. You have some in, uh, settings here for if you have a low quality video, if you have a medium or high, if it's progressive, interlaced to CG, and then you can choose a compression uh, algorithm here. If it's a high compressed video, if it's noisy, blurry, or if it's a lot of jitter. So you can run those different models. And then the output here, you can have a bunch of different formats. And they are different depending on uh, what video quality you choose. The output size can be anything from SD all the way to 8K. If you want to try that out, you can uh, see if you have a lot of ga uh, grain and so on, you can change uh, those settings a bit to improve things. And you can also change the video format and uh, how many frames per second you should have. So there is a bunch of settings here and you can fiddle around with them in order to see what the result would be. I have run this model on a bunch of videos and I have some examples, so let's look at those. The first example here is one of my first videos and also the one that is actually most viewed on YouTube. And you can see here that it can actually make a big difference if you have text and so on that you want to clear up and we get a totally different one when we actually scale it up into a larger setting. So let's switch to the next um, part of this video here. In this next example here, we can see that on the top half, we have really bright colors and also not as blurry as a result. And the old video on the bottom half path is actually half the size of the ones up above and we can see here that all the text is a little bit blurry a little bit less colorful and so on so the upper part they have really brightened up the color and really fixed the text so it's very legible in the overhead path and we also can see on the right hand side that the text on the white background is really standing out and we can actually read it very well. So they've gone, done a really good job of upscaling it here. Next up we have a Visual Studio Code example and we can see the same going on here. The text is a little bit more vibrant, it's a little bit less blurry and easier to read. So that is because it's much higher resolution and they have worked a lot on getting the details right. So it seems that this machine learning technique actually works pretty well with these kind of old videos. And I think this was shot in 720p or something like that. So it's not that high resolution. Last but not least, let's see how it did on this sharp fella down in the corner. It seems that it actually did a pretty good job of upscaling me. The uh, end result is not perfect, of course, but the input was atrocious, really bad. And they have done a really good job of actually getting my face details out from this recording. So you can actually see me here, <laughs> but still. Now it's going to continue with something that you probably want to do something with yourself, and that's home recordings. And here we have a very early recording of my son. And the upper left hand part is unscaled up and the old the video that I shot on a Pixel 3. And if you look very closely on this one, we can see that it, there is a, a lot of grain and so on. So it's a, an old recording. But if we look at the lower right one, we can actually see a lot of details in that one. 
The upper right one is actually 4K, so that is very much larger than any of the other ones, but you can still see a lot of artifacts in that one. Uh, the lower left one is unblurred one, and the lower right one is denoised. And yeah, you can see that it, it is a little bit better, but still there isn't really that much it can do with the recording. It is very much higher res, and you can see more of the details here, but it's still not really perfect. So it's an interesting technology and you can do a lot with it and get out some extra um, some extra details from the background of your videos or even on the subject of your video. But with these kind of shaky home recordings there is probably not that much it can do with it. Now that we have seen the examples, I did some data mining of this program to look into what is actually done here. And it's pretty much taking a bunch of models and applying those to your video. And one of the models uh, was named something FGNet. And FGNet is, if you Google for it, something that is used for face uh, detection or face recognition. So that's interesting that they have taken that model and reapplied it to this specific functionality. And other than that, I can't really look at the specific models because those are compressed with a password. And decrypting that would be highly unethical, probably illegal and a breach of contract. And I will not do that. But looking at files on disk should be just fine. So there is a cache file that I thought was really interesting here. This cache file says a little bit about the different models. They have something called version 2 here with 24 or 64 uh, layers or could it be bits or something like that. Different uh, compression algorithms, uh, not really clear. And then they say that they have about 1400 convolution models here and then uh, about 30 fully connected layers and then some extra layers in order to get the output. Uh, and the same goes for the 64 here where you have about 900 convolution models and then a bunch of fully connected around 20 or so and then some more in order to get this final result. So the version two here is a bunch of layers. I remember that I had a model that I ran with about 32 layers and that took months to run on my uh, little 1070 here but I guess that they have been running this in the cloud because this is actually uh, uh, using something called OpenVINO that will give you an ONX output and is mostly run in the Azure cloud so maybe they have used the Azure cloud in order to do the actual training of this model and then you can apply it very easily in this program. So it's an interesting application, an interesting program, not super expensive. If you're using it uh, in the free uh, version as I do, you get the watermark, but if you pay for it, you will of course not have that. Uh, so this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have used this program or have any other comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.